Hi, I'm Rukmini and this is I'm Anuradha and what ties us uh, in common is that we are both myth enthusiasts. We have done a postgraduate diploma in comparative mythology from Mumbai University and that has really fueled our passion for myths uh, and we do think that myths, uh, though tales of long ago, are still very, very relevant. Uh, and so we have formed a forum called the Myth Spot. The Myth Spot has tied up with the Bhavan to present to you a series called the Mythscapes which will try and bring to you myths from around the world, see how the common patterns and motives tie them all together and also try and see how these myths are still imprinted in our collective and individual psyches even today. Anuradha, don't you think it's interesting that our journey which began in a classroom in the Kalina campus of Mumbai University eight, nine years ago has still kept us so interested in myths. We've traveled across two continents and we still are fascinated and we keep discussing myths. Why do you think that is so? A comparative mythology course that we did, it opened a world of understanding symbolism and that was the most important thing. We all grew up with all these mythological stories uh, either told by our grandmother, mother, father, you know, all the people around you. We read it from a comic book. Um, but then once once we did that course, we realized that the, the, the essence of myth runs through every single thing in that, that of life that touches us from films to I mean even in Bollywood film you see the hero's journey and the hero fights and hero you know uh, rescues damsel in distress and that's a hero's journey and that's how and that's that's in it's no less than a mythical journey of any other hero so you uh, you realize and how, then when you study the theories you read about how Freud and Jung they have used myths extensively in psychoanalysis and you cannot go beyond that because you know that it's a collective subconscious and that's the most important thing of myth that the collective subconscious it still stays with us it remains with us and it's going to be with us and that's Absolutely. the continuity and Absolutely and you know in my day job as a brand strategist, you know, are consulting with brands around the world. You know, I've traveled across the world from the Americas, all over Europe and in Asia and dealing with brands and it could be, a, you know, a pot of yogurt or it could be a service. You see, even in the world of brands and communication, how marketeers tap into mythical symbols. Absolutely. We all uh, pick up a cup of Starbucks on our way into work in exactly. the morning. Have you ever looked at the Starbucks logo? The mermaid, where does it come from? Again, a mythical symbolism of a mythical creature. Nike, you know, all of us are wearing Nike Fitbits and uh, wanting to own the latest pair of Nike shoes. What is Nike exactly. if not tapping into that notion of the heroic victory of the Roman goddess? Nike. And so wherever we look, whether it's the supermarket. Or even the apple. Absolutely. Half bitten apple. Yes. You know, exactly. uh, half eaten uh, apple. Apple, you know, the fruit of knowledge. Fruit, fruit of Again, knowledge. Yes. Or whatever, whichever way you interpret it, yes. you know, it's a half eaten apple. Even in high fashion, you see Versace using Medusa's head exactly. uh, as a logo. So it goes on, and uh, and and, and I, as as I as we both agree that it is the collective subconscious which is the most important element of me. It's it was there, it will be there, and that's the line of continuity, and that's how and. Human nature, yes, we have made immense progress in terms of science. We're still, you know, you know, discovering things. But human element, human behavior will somewhat be similar. You know, the feeling of passion, joy, or, you know, questioning things that riddle our mind will always be the same. So we cannot just write them off as stories of demon distant past because myth has a negative connotation in that sense but you cannot do that and you also need to when you read the, the most important part of the course that we did was also to 
you know, see through the embellishment and look at what was. And my my journey with myth is to look into the historicity, the socio-political structure, what was happening at that time, which could have given rise to that myth. It all has a meaning. And sociologists and anthropologists across the world are now using from fairy tale to myth everything. And historians are using their, you know, uh, historic historical methods to evaluate myth, they evaluate the social evolution, so hence myth. I, I think what we are also trying to do finally very importantly in this in the Mythscape sessions is not just to uh, bring together uh, to the participants uh, these uh, timeless stories from across cultures but what really we are trying to do is to help decode those stories and identify the patterns and themes that are so similar. How is it that a flood myth from uh, the Mesopotamia Sumerian region is the same as the flood myth from the uh, uh, Gangetic Valley uh, region of India. How is it that primal goddesses, whether they are among the Aztecs or um, Incas in the Americas, is the same as a primal goddess uh, myth of uh, Egypt? And I think for me, that's why uh, any session like this, which studies comparative myths, is so important because it is such a timely reminder in this day and age when we are trying to uh, break ourselves down into uh, small compartments that essentially all human beings are the same. That essentially the journey of evolution of man from consciousness to this day when we, you know, about to colonize Mars is the same. Human beings, irrespective of what you were saying, the socio-cultural or political or historic context, react to each other and react to the universe in some fundamentally similar ways. And myths have helped capture those essential similarities.